God is so good. Yes, you are, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. I just want to uh, share a little to- testimony. Um, my sister and her children came down from from uh, the mainland, and um, my sister is ho- hardcore Jehovah Witness. But um, I just realized this afternoon that where I pray, where I read my word, is where she's sleeping or on couch that I, I pray and I remember. <laughs> God is so good. God, I just realized that this afternoon I told Sister Vanessa, hey, check this out. That's where I pray and where I read the word. <laughs> started, started anointing her. Go oh, get some oil and start again. Come on now. God, it's so good. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. He set you up. He set you up real royal. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Come on. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table he will satisfy. Taste of his glory, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and all.
blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. For such a time as this, God has brought us here. Amen. Hallelujah.
thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children in his presence walk before you and behind you and beside you all around you within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening Going, you're weeping, rejoicing. He's for you, 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 he's for you. Pastor Rocky, Pastor Bobby, Benaya, Lord, uh, Auntie Carol, Pastor Charles, Lord, blood of Jesus upon them right now where they're at, Father, a great refreshing in them and through them, Father, we thank you for this time, we thank you for the pa associate pastors and their families, Father, the worship pastor, youth pastor, and their family, Father, we thank you for your missionary, Lord, we thank you for the leaders and the laborers, Father, in this house, we thank you, Father, for keeping us, and we thank you for our facilities, Lord, our main sanctuary as well, Lord. We thank you for each and every family represented here in this place, Lord. We bless you and we praise you, giving you all the honor. We thank you for the word coming forth tonight, Lord. A fresh anointing upon your servant, Father, the speaker, bringing forth the word tonight, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, Father. We thank you above all for your love, Lord. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for your continual mercy in upon, and upon Lahaina, Father, for the, for the families there, Lord. We thank you for, uh, for your mercy upon Kula as well and those families up there as well. We thank you for keeping us, Lord. We thank you for your, your love. We thank you for your forgiveness, Father. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. Giving you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Thank you, Lord. God is good, amen? Amen. Woo. How many are you excited to be here tonight? Come on. God is so, so good. Amen. And he's so faithful. He's so, so faithful. Hallelujah. How many have ever been distracted? Oh, help me, Lord. Yeah, I've been distracted before. Amen. That's kind of one of the tools the enemy uses when, he, when he's trying to get our eyes focused in another direction amen he wants to he wants to distract us and start having us look here and look there amen and i know sometimes it's so easy to get distracted with all the things that are happening in life amen whether it's the government trying to distract everybody so they can go do what they want to do over here and they got everybody looking over here at silly stuff amen or whether it's at home or it's at work all kinds of distractions everywhere, amen? Things that will take your eye off the prize, amen? 
things that will take your eyes off of what God has called each and every one of us to do. Amen? Because it's different for everybody. Amen? Some things we have in common and some things are the same, but some things God has given you to do. God has given me to do. Hallelujah? And it's so easy to get distracted. Amen? Praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody, for sowing seed into my life. I pray God return to you a hundredfold, a complete harvest. Amen? I know I don't take it lightly, the, the sowing and the giving, how hard everyone works for, for the finances that God puts into, into your lives. And I, I so appreciate your willingness to be such giving people. Amen? And so I pray God just bless your socks off today. Amen? In so many different areas, we get distracted. Apostle gave me the privilege of learning I was going to speak tonight kind of early. You know, he told me kind of early and, and, you know, just kind of kept waiting to hear, hear from the Lord, kept waiting to hear from the Lord. And I got distracted. You know, I started watching TV probably a little too much. Not probably, a little too much. Amen. Things started just distracting me, and all of a sudden, it's like, man, where did all the time go? Amen. And so sometimes you got to put away the distractions. Amen. Sometimes you need your wife to tell you, hey, <laughs> you need to put away the distractions. Come on. Come on, somebody. She's my helpmate. Amen. She does it because she loves me, not because she, not because she wants to say something, you know, she does it because she loves me. But all of a sudden, when you put away the distractions and you start focusing on Jesus, amen, you start getting, getting closer to him, amen, you start pushing all the other things aside, amen, you stop looking to the left and to the right, you can see and you can hear a whole lot better, amen, yeah. and all of a sudden, those distractions aren't bothering you anymore because now you're in communication with God, Amen. And you can hear exactly what it is that he wants to say. Amen? So we put away all those things that, that would get in the way. Amen? That would cause us to not be able to concentrate on him. Amen? I like this slide because it, it shows what should be our singular focus. is Jesus. Amen? Amen? And in focusing on Jesus, we can accomplish everything that we need to do. Amen? Amen? Come on, somebody. Let's be real. Sometimes it doesn't, it's not always about being in church and reading your Bible. Amen? There's things that we need to do in life. Hallelujah. Yeah. But we can do them with an eye towards Jesus and what you would have me to do. Yeah. How are you going to lead me today, Lord? What is it that you want me to accomplish out in the world? Amen? Amen. What is it that you want me to do so that I can uh, accomplish everything that you set forth for me to do? Whether it's in your finances, whether it's your job, whether it's in the house of God, whether it's witnessing to somebody. Come on, if you're distracted, you're not going to hear God say, hey, I need you to go talk to that person. Amen. That person's just going to walk right on by and you're, and you're not even going to hear it. Amen? Amen? And so having an eye focused on Jesus all the time while living in this world where we have things that we have to accomplish. Amen? That's the idea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. Amen. All righty. Let's get going. If you need a title, where's your focus? Where is it that you have your focus right now? Amen. Where do I have my focus? Is it on things that are happening all around us? I, you know, I feel so... I felt so bad for all the people in Lahaina that, that just lost so, so much. And, and I know that they're well-meaning people and they're, they're just trying to help. Everyone's just trying to help each other. But what I don't hear in the media, what I don't hear in social media, on YouTube or any of these things, is people asking them to call out to the Lord. So maybe that's something that I need to do. Maybe that's something that we need to do more of. Because I know that as much as everyone in this community and around the world wants to help, Jesus is the answer. That's right. Amen. 
He's the only answer. Hallelujah. He is their provision. He is their protection. He is everything. He is the one that will restore. He is the one that can mend the heart of the broken hearted, the ones who've lost so many loved ones. Because the enemy caused this big distraction to, to come into their lives and this tragedy to come into their lives. It's not just a distraction, it's a tragedy. Such a profound loss. Amen? Amen. Amen. But God is able to restore. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Beyond what they could ask or even imagine. Amen? Amen? And even though they might not be able to see it right now, God is there with them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's our job to let them know that. Amen. To give them a hug when they need a hug. And let them know that God is with you. Even though it doesn't seem like it sometimes, God is always there with you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the Word. Matthew chapter 14, verse 28. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ready? Let's read. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord God. We thank you that you would teach tonight, Lord God. Teach each and every one of us what you would have for us, Lord God. Speak to your people, Lord God, and help us to understand a little bit, a little bit more, Lord God, what it is that you have to say to us, Lord. So we honor and we thank you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank you for standing to reverence the word of the Lord. So in a world full of distractions, where's your focus? What is it on? What are the things that consume your time? Amen? You know, time is the biggest treasure. It's beyond money. Amen? Money comes and goes. But you can't get back time. And so where we put our time is a reflection of what we, ha what we place importance on. Amen? There's a lot of folks that come on Sunday that don't necessarily come on Wednesday because their time is put somewhere else. Come on, let's be honest. Their time is put somewhere else. Amen? There's a lot of people that should be in the houses of God that aren't because their time, what they deem to be important, is somewhere else. Amen? But what is more important than spending time with the Lord? There's nothing more important. Amen? Yeah, sometimes we have things that we need to do. Amen? Understood. But on a regular basis, what you spend your time on is where your heart is. Amen? It's what you prioritize in your life. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. So is your focus on your relationships? Is it on your job? Amen? Is it on your home? Is it on family and friends? What are the things that are, that are driving your focus? Amen? When you see yourself, what is it that you see yourself doing? What is it that you see yourself spending time on? Is it on reading the Word? Or is it, oh, I got to sleep for an extra 15 minutes so I hit that snooze button. Oh, I got I to gotta do this before I can read my word. Is it important? Amen? Amen. It needs to be important. Hallelujah. How do we learn about our Father unless we spend time? Amen? Unless we spend time reading about Him, learning about Him, speaking to Him in prayer. Amen? So many things that we just take for granted sometimes. But all of a sudden, these little distractions take away, the, take away our, our time reading, our word, our devotion, amen? Take away our time spent in prayer. Just little distractions here and there, amen? It doesn't have to be anything big. Sometimes it is, but it doesn't have to be. The enemy wants to use those little things, the little foxes, amen? 
use those little things to keep us from growing in our relationship as maybe as fast as we should amen maybe god's got something for you to in a timeline amen and is he patient absolutely but maybe just maybe he needs you to get on on the bandwagon and stop letting those those distractions hinder you amen so that you can learn and i can learn what i need to learn right now amen, amen? So that I can accomplish exactly what God wants me to accomplish. Hallelujah. Because God has a plan for each and every one of us. He has a plan for each and every one of us. And we, it is our responsibility to accomplish the things that God said we can do. Amen. Yes. God is good. Let's go to verse 25. Matthew 14, 25. We're going to read, read this story. And then I know that everybody's like i heard this story already i know the story amen but we, indulge me a little bit we're going to read through verse 25 says and in the fourth watch of the night jesus went unto them walking on the sea and when his disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear but straightway jesus spake unto them saying be of good cheer it is i be not afraid amen What's the first thing he told him? Don't be afraid. Amen. He was coming to his disciples who knew him and they were still afraid. Why? Because they were seeing with their, with their fleshly eyes. Amen. They were seeing and, and not understanding how it is that anybody could walk on water. Amen. And so it generated fear. First thing, it generated fear. But the first thing Jesus said is, don't be afraid. Amen? Amen. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou bid me, come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come out of the boat, out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did th didst thou doubt? And they, when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. There's so much, there's so much in that, in just those few verses to unpack. Amen. And I know everybody knows the story. Hallelujah. But I, I pray tonight that you would hear what God put upon my heart to share with you tonight so that you can get something, amen, that's going to help you and help me in our, in our everyday walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's start at the beginning. I know that there's a lot of people, when I was researching and, and stuff, people um, out there think that it was Jesus' idea calling Peter. But really, it wasn't. Jesus, I mean, Peter wanted... He asked. He wanted to step out on the water. Amen? It was his request. Amen? All Jesus did is said, come. You want to come? Come. I can make that happen for you. Amen? And why is it important? There's two things that stood out. First, it was a physical act. Amen. It was an expression of Peter's faith. When Jesus said, come, it was an expression when he asked. Even, even before Jesus said, come, when he asked. Because he said, I know if it's you. You see, I know you, Jesus. But I know if it's you, then you tell me, come. Because I'm, I'm going to express my faith in you right now. Because I believe in you. Amen? Amen? I believe in you. And I know... That if you tell me to come, then I can do it. You need to get this. If God tells you, if God tells you you can, you can. Amen. Come on, somebody. If God tells you that you can do it, if God tells you I have that new job set aside just for you, you can step into it. Just because he said, he said so. Amen? 
And he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even think, is where it says. Amen. There's nothing that's too hard for him. Telling Peter to walk on water wasn't a difficult task. He just said, come. That's all he did. And Peter stepped out of the boat. And he started to walk. The only other person in, who's ever in history walked on water. Amen? I know they get the Photoshop where they, you know, your feet just kind of a little bit below the surface of the water. But no, he actually walked on the water. Amen? Amen. Because his eyes were focused. He was focused on the one who bid him to come. He, didn't, he wasn't looking around. Amen? All he heard was, come. And so he did. He stepped forth in faith. Amen? It was an expression of his faith. The faith that he had in Christ. Amen? Amen. He had seen so many things up to that point. What he saw God do. What he saw Jesus do. Amen? Amen? And so he knew if he said it, he could do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second thing was, it was a request. He said, Lord, if it's you... Bid me to come. Just tell me to come. It was a request. How many times do we make requests of the Lord? Every day. Every day. Pastor Orlando always said, God is good and I need help every day. Lord, help. I need help. And he's there. He's always there. There's never a time that he's not there. There's never a time that he doesn't hear your voice. There's never a time that he doesn't hear us cry out to him. Amen? He's always there for us. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. In this moment, Peter's entire focus was on the one who bid him to come. There was nothing else and no one else. Amen? He was focused. Just like the picture. Amen? All he could see was Jesus. That's it. He didn't care about anybody who was in the boat. He didn't care about the boat. He just had a singular focus on the one who told him to come. Peter, just like the rest of the word of the Lord, just like the rest of the Bible, amen, It applies to the past, to the present, and to the future. Amen? All of us. All of humanity. Past, present, and future. It applies to each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. You know, it's kind of funny. When I think about the different stories in the Bible, amen, I think, how could they grumble? How could the how could the Israelites grumble when they had shoes that lasted 40 years? I don't know about anybody else, but my shoes don't last that long. <laughs> Amen? Walking around in the middle of the desert, and they have food to eat. Got blessed even when they grumbled about not having meat. Got so much meat that, they, that they, they, it was coming out of their nostrils, the word says. Amen? And you think story after story after story, all these things that they saw God do. Amen? But they still doubted. Amen? And I don't know about anybody else, but I know I've, I've just thought to myself, how could you do that? And then God has to remind me, hmm, you've seen me do a lot of things in your life, but yet you still doubt. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help my unbelief. Amen. Amen. For that man that said, I believe, but help my unbelief. That so resonates with me because I believe. I believe he says he is who he says he is. Hallelujah. I have no doubt about that. But help my unbelief in the things that happen because I start looking to the left and to the right. I start seeing the distractions that the enemy puts, puts all around me.
trying to get my attention, trying to get my focus off of who it is that I'm supposed to be focused on. Amen? And it happens in my life. And I bet it happens in everybody else's too. So maybe today is just a reminder for each, each of us that what we need to be focused on, who it is that we need to be focused on. Amen? Ah, thank you, Father. Somebody getting something tonight? Amen. Peter's eyes, his attention, his focus was completely set on Jesus while he was making the request. But as soon as the request was granted, then and only then was his focus diverted. Oh, come on. When he said, bid me to come, and Jesus said, come, he granted his request. And so he stepped off, and he stepped out onto the water. Amen? And what does the word say? Oh, he started looking, and he saw the sea. And he saw it was boisterous. Amen? And all of a sudden, he began to sink. Because he took his eyes, he took his focus off of the very one that told him he could. Off of the very one that granted his request. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me to keep my eyes on you. Amen. Simply put, Peter had his eyes completely on Jesus. And while he was making the request, he took his eyes off Jesus when he was granted the request. I think that this is where we get a little off sometimes. Praise Lord, Sister Vanessa, can you turn me down just a little bit, please? We're really good at looking to Jesus when we're asking for the provision. We're really good at looking to Jesus when we're making our re requests, our prayer requests. Amen. When we're asking the Lord, Lord, I need your help in this area of my life. We're really good at focusing on Jesus when we're making the request for that new relationship, for that new home, for that new job, for our ministry to begin to take off because we know that God has a call on our life and we're just asking him, Lord, Help me with what it is that I'm supposed to do. We're so good at being focused during that time. Amen? Oh, come on. But what about once it happens? Do we stay focused on the one who made it happen in the first place? Or do we take our eyes off Christ and begin to see the winds and the waves all around us? Amen? All of a sudden, you got that new job, but boy, there's that one person that just really irritates you in that new position. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, you start focusing on the one that was irritating you. And you forget about the fact that God said, okay, you can have that new job because I have a plan for you so that you can affect change around you in a new environment. Because you... You took your eyes off of the one who granted your request in the first place. Amen? And I'm, I'm speaking about myself first. Amen? Because we start to get comfortable. You see, once the prayer request has been granted, Lord, heal me. Help me. I need your help. Heal me, please. And then all of a sudden, when the healing comes, we, we kind of just forget about it. And our eyes... Go on to something else. Amen? And we forget to remain focused on the one who did the healing. Do we let those distractions of this world begin to cause us to lose our focus? Do we let the inevitable attacks of the enemy cause us to allow doubt to enter into our minds? Let's look at what happened to Peter. When, verse 30 says, But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And I mentioned it earlier, but the word says that he saw the wind. Amen? He saw the effects of the wind. Amen? Amen? All of a sudden, the waves were around because he lost his focus. 
And because he lost his focus and he began to focus on the things that were around him, amen, rather than on the one who had bid him to come, rather than the one who said, you can do this thing. I am here. I'm here for you, and I want you to put your faith in me. You can walk on water, and you can come out to me. Rather than focus on that, he began to focus on all the things around him, and he began to sink. Only then did he begin to sink, because he took his eyes off of the one who he needed to have his, fo have his focus on. Amen? His focus had shifted to his surroundings and to what he perceived according to his own flesh, to his own thoughts and beliefs. When we start looking at the things that are around us and, and we start operating in the flesh, amen, rather than being in the spirit, the first thing that came was fear. And God said he has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen? Amen? But the first thing that comes when you operate and I operate in my own flesh is fear. It's fear. That's what the Word said. Hallelujah? So we need to guard against that. Amen? Amen. We need to guard against it because God said He didn't give it to us so it's got to be coming from someplace else. It's got to be... A, the enemy. He didn't get, God said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. But when you take your eyes off of me, when you take your eyes off of me, amen, and you start to focus on the things that you see and you begin to operate in, in your flesh, it generates fear. Amen? Amen? He was no longer operating in faith, no longer operating in the faith in his Lord and, and in his Savior, faith in the one whom he had trusted, faith in the one who granted his petition. Amen? So let's look at what Jesus said to Peter after he got rescued. Amen? Verse 31 says, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? So Jesus addressed his faith issue, right? But he didn't say, you don't have any faith, Peter. What's wrong with you? He just said, you have a little faith. Amen? But you know, God can work with a little faith. Hallelujah. And if we keep our eyes focused on him, we, he can turn that into great faith. It was great faith when he stepped off the boat. Amen? Amen? I don't know about anybody else, but I've always wanted to walk on water. Hey. <laughs> Amen? Amen? He had great faith when he walked on water. Yeah. But that faith diminished when he was looking at his surroundings. Amen? Amen? seeing the things in the natural, in the flesh. Hallelujah. So he addressed the faith issue. And secondly, Jesus addressed the real issue. Why did you doubt? That was the real issue. Amen. It wasn't because Peter had a little faith. It was because he doubted. He doubted in the one who had called him to come. He doubted in the one that he knew. He knew all you have to do, Lord, is just tell me to come, and I'll come. When this whole thing started, all I, all I, he knew all you had to do is say, come. But because he lost his focus, he began to doubt. Why did you doubt the that you could do the very thing that I said for you to do. How many of you ever got a word from the Lord that you know God told you to do something? I pray every hand go up in this place. 
Because God's talking to each and every one of us, whether we recognize it or not. God has called you to do something. Each and every one of us. Amen. Amen? But I know there's been times where I doubt it. Everybody else might not want to admit it, but I know it's true. For me, there's times that I've doubted. Can I really do that, God? Am I equipped for that mission? Can I really do what it is that you said? Self-doubt. Amen? The enemy trying to plant seeds of doubt. But God said you can because I, he told me to do it. He told me I can. Or he wouldn't have given me the assignment. Amen? And so even though we have self-doubt sometimes, even though there's things that come up that the enemy is trying to to distract us or he's trying to cause us to look here or look there or take our focus away from Jesus we got to be able to hold fast and remember when he said I've called you to do this son I've called you to do this daughter I've called you to accomplish this task for my kingdom and for my sake and so if I've called you I've equipped you amen and you can do the very thing that God has called you to do. There is nothing too big. There is nothing too impossible that God cannot make a way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no devil too big. Amen. There's no obstacle too large that he can try and put in front of you. That can deter you from accomplishing your purpose. That God has given you. Amen. Amen. Just like Peter, if you don't know what your purpose is, if you don't know what it is that God's called you to do, maybe not lifelong, amen, but for the time and the season that you're in, you need to get on your face before God. You need to focus. I need to focus. Amen? I'm not talking at you. I'm with you. I need to focus and make sure my eyes are set on Him. Amen. When I cut out all the distractions, when I cut out the TV, when I cut out all the, all the noise, amen, when I'm not worrying about work, when I'm not worrying about all the things that, that are going on and I can just focus on Jesus and I can, I can hear his voice, this is what it is that I've called you to do, son. These are the things that I need you to accomplish because I'm telling you you can. Amen? And if God tells you you can, there's nobody that can tell you different. Hallelujah? If God says you can, you can. On, Period. End of story. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This story, just like, just like the Israelites in the wilderness, amen? It's so easy to just look at Peter and go, why didn't you take your eyes off of Jesus? You could have kept walking on water. Amen? It's so easy for us. We just sit back in our, you know, in our chair, in our recliner, we read in the Word. And we just make these judgments. Oh, it was so easy. All you have to do, you just have to listen. That's it. All you have to do is listen. <laughs> and then the Word of the Lord says, well, why aren't you listening? Why aren't you listening to me when I'm telling you to do something? Not so easy when it's concerning you. Oh, help me, Father. You're right, Lord. It's not easy when it's me. It's e easy for me to, to judge others, amen? Not so easy when it's about me and I got to look at myself and go, oh, it's because I doubt. Oh, it's because I fear. Oh, it's because I have unbelief in certain areas. All these things that I have to, I have to deal with and just, and just lay at the cross. In my own flesh, I got to deal with. I got to put down my flesh so that my spirit man can rise up within me. Amen? Amen. So that my focus can be right. So I can do what God said I can do. Because he said I can do it. Amen? Amen? Amen. 
Every time we read the Word of God, story after story, it seems unfathomable to us. Why, why would anyone question the Lord and not believe Him when He says to do something? Yet we struggle time and time again with our own lives, with what the Lord has given us or given into our hands, or what He has called us to do. Amen? Everybody turn to Mark eleven twenty three. The word says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That is a bold statement from the Lord. I have not yet moved any mountains. Amen. But does that mean the word's not true? No. no, the word's always true. Amen? The word is always true. But shall not doubt in his heart. God gave me this, so I'm going to share it with you. Seeds of doubt are planted in the mind, but they take root in the heart of man. The seeds of doubt are planted in your mind. They first occur in your mind, but they take root in your heart. Because when you constantly are feeding your heart doubt from your mind, it gets into your heart. They take root there. Amen? We must maintain our focus on the Lord in every area of our lives. Trust in Him and that He will help us accomplish that which he has entrusted us to accomplish no matter what it may look like around us. No matter how big the waves are, no matter how big the distraction is. No matter how big the tragedy that we have to go through. God is always there. He promised to never leave us or forsake us. Amen? He is always by our side. He is always there to help us. As soon as we take our focus off of Jesus, similar to Peter, the seeds of doubt begin to take hold. And as doubt increases, our flesh instinctively begins to focus on what is causing the doubt, the issue, the problem, the distraction, rather than the one who has the answer. As soon as our flesh gets involved and we take our focus off of Jesus, we begin to look at the things all around us. Amen? We start looking at all those things that are happening around us and it begins to feed that doubt. It begins to feed that fear. Oh man, maybe I can't do this. And now you're telling God what you can do when He said you can do something else. When God said you can, you're trying to tell Him you can't. And who am I to tell God I can't do what you said I can. Who am I? I'm nobody. I'm nobody. Certainly not to tell God how it's going to be. Amen? But when we get our eyes off of Jesus, when we lose our focus, it instinctively happens that we begin to look around and it becomes uh, something that we feed. And that's all we begin to look at. And sometimes we've got to just shake ourselves out of it and say, you know what, I need to focus back on Jesus. Amen. Go back to the beginning of the plan where you said you can. Amen? Before you got sidetracked and before you got all distracted, let's go back to where I got my instructions. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is good. Turn to Isaiah 26.3. I'm going to read from the Amplified. It says, You will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast, that is committed and focused on you in both inclination and character, because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. 
perfect and constant peace. The one whose mind is steadfast, committed and focused on you. Why? Because we trust him. He's going he's gonna to keep us in perfect peace because we trusted him. And we take refuge in him. That means we can hide, we can shelter, we can just be at peace in his presence. Amen? Amen. Because we trusted in him. Hallelujah. How many of you ever heard of SOS? Not the food. Not the, not the distress signal. Amen. Shiny object syndrome. How many heard of si- shiny object syndrome? Shiny object syndrome is when you're focused on something, but you see something shiny over there. And now your focus is over here. And you start moving in that direction, and boom. Your focus is over here now. Because you saw something shiny over here. Amen. It's kind of like squirrel. Ooh, squirrel. Shiny object syndrome. It takes our focus away. Amen? God's not about shiny object syndrome. That's not how he operates. The enemy operates that way. It's a tool he uses. Amen? To distract us. Hallelujah? When God gives you a call, a purpose, a calling, He's not going to change it up on you every five minutes. Amen? He's steadfast. God is steadfast. Always moving forward. Amen? To accomplish the thing that he has. When he sends his word forth, it will accomplish what he sent it out to do. Amen? His word doesn't get distracted and go over here or go over there. Amen? But the enemy, he tries to use that shiny object syndrome. And he'll just throw that up. Oh, look at this. Why don't you go do this? And then you start going and doing that. You remember what your call was, but you start going over here. And then all of a sudden, boom, he throws another one out over here. And you go off and you're doing all of this. And pretty soon the time, remember the time, the thing that you can't get back? The time that you spent going here and there. Amen. Chasing all these shiny objects all around. Amen. It's distracted you from your purpose. It's distracted you from your call. It's distracted you from the vision that God has for you. Amen? And now you're not accomplishing what it is that God had for you to accomplish. You're off on your own doing all these things. Amen? You're doing all these little things. And you think you're making progress, but you're not. You're busy, but you're not moving forward. That's the plan of the enemy, to keep you busy. Busy isn't moving forward. Busy isn't accomplishing your purpose. We can be busy in that purpose, but just being busy alone isn't accomplishing what God has for you to do. Amen? And the only reason shiny object syndrome is a thing that affects us is when our focus is off. When we're not focused on the thing and the purpose and the one who has called us to accomplish it. Amen? Amen. So watch out for shiny object syndrome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another thing shiny object syndrome does is it it cripples your progress in whatever you have set out to accomplish. So whether it's shiny object syndrome, diversions, fear, doubt, unbelief, lack of focus, these are just some of the ways the enemy tries to keep us from doing and accomplishing the very thing or things that the Lord has called us to do. Amen? If the enemy can get you or I to take our focus off of what we have been called, what we've been chosen to accomplish, then just like Peter, we'll begin to sink into an unending attack of fear, doubt, and disbelief all of which prevents us from fulfilling our kingdom work here on earth. Amen? Amen. That's why we have to maintain our focus. Just like when Peter stepped out of the boat at the master's call. 
so too our master calls us to step out in faith. Amen? A physical act. Remember? God's calling you and I to a physical act of faith. To trust Him and to believe that He is able to accomplish in us the very thing that we've asked for. Lord, I just want to be used. Use me, God. And when He says, okay, I'll use you. Don't get distracted. Don't lose your focus. Amen? Amen. Keep focused. He's telling you exactly what, it, what He wants from you. He's telling me exactly what He wants from me. Amen? When we get alone, get on our face before God and seek His face for what it is that He wants us to do. Eliminate the distractions. Eliminate the things that are going to cause us to look to the left or to the right and just be focused on Him. Amen? There's nothing that's too hard for Him. And if we stay focused on Him, He will see us through to the end. To the very thing that we have been called to do is done. It's complete. To the glory of God the Father. Amen? For His glory. That's the whole reason that we are here it's the whole reason we serve. It's the whole reason we love Him. It's because He deserves it. Amen. He deserves all that I can give Him and so much more. Yes, Amen? Amen? God has purpose for each and every one of us. He has a plan for each and every one of us. He has lives that are waiting to be um, touched by each and every one of us. Because we can all touch different people. Amen? No matter what it is, whether it's, it's being a blessing, amen, whether it's buying a meal, whether it's giving a hug, whether it's sharing the word, amen, whether it's you stepping into the position that God has for you to step into, whether it's you taking on the call that God has upon your life, amen. God is a perpetual God. He always wants to move forward. Amen? He wants us to move forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we submit to the training, to the time that He has given us to prepare. Amen? Amen? But we keep focused on the call that He has on our life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Only you can answer where your focus is. I can't answer that. God knows. You know. I know where my focus is. Amen? I know I need to get better. I know I need to concentrate and eliminate a bunch of distractions. Yes. Amen. Yes. That are keeping me from moving forward the way God wants me to. Amen. He's so patient. He's so patient with us. Thank Amen. Lord, yes. and for me, I'd have given up years ago. <laughs> but he's patient. Yes. He's patient with me. Yes. Thank you, Even when I mess up, he's patient with me. It's no excuse, but he's patient. He's loving. He's kind. Amen? He doesn't just toss me aside and move on to somebody else. Amen? He's faithful to complete the work that he started in me. Hallelujah? He's faithful to complete the work that he started in you. Amen? So let's watch our focus. Amen? Let's get rid of all the things that cause us to look to the left and to the right. Amen. And keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the word I have for tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Amen. Amen. God is such an awesome God. And it begins with a relationship. Amen. And so... You know, it's funny, I, I always say, I may know all the folks in the house, but I don't really know your heart. Amen? Only you know your heart. Only God knows your heart. And if you're watching online, God knows your heart. Amen? Because even though I can't see you, God is, is watching right now. Amen? And so if there's any, all head bow, heads bowed and eyes closed, if there's anybody that either hasn't received the Lord or needs to have a fresh touch from Him. 
you go ahead and raise your hand. And if you watch it online, if that's you and you, you haven't received the Lord, all you got to do is raise your hand. God sees you right where you're at. God sees you right where you're at. You're important to him. So important that he would leave the 99 and go for the one. Amen. And rejoice when he finds the one. Hallelujah. All of heaven rejoices when one comes to the kingdom. And so if that's you tonight, just raise your hand. Thank you, Lord. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I ask you to wash me clean in your precious blood. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again on the third day and I seated at the right hand of the Father. I thank you, Lord, that I'll never be the same. And I thank you, Lord, that I submit my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you, Online, please go ahead and reach out to us. You can, you can, if you got a prayer request or if there's, uh, if you need a, if you need a Bible, you can go ahead and reach us at wordoftruthmaui.org. Amen. We want to celebrate with you, so share your testimony. Amen. We want to rejoice with you. Amen. If you, if you're out there and you, you're looking for a, a home church. Amen. This is good ground. Hallelujah. This is good ground. Amen. So please come and join us. You can get all the information on the website, wordoftruthmaui.org. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you want to go ahead and sow a seed, you can go ahead and go to wordoftruthmaui.org, hit that green button. Amen. That green give button. It'll take you securely through the website. You can go ahead and plant a seed. Amen. Over 22 outreaches. 22 outreaches th this house gives to. Amen. We sow seed. We believe in sowing seed. Amen. And watching God just bring harvest after harvest. Amen. We can't outgive Him. Amen. But we can sow seed. You can also sow seed to help the people of Lahaina. Amen. There's a, there's a link on the website that uh, if you want to sow a seed to help the people of Lahaina, all 100% of that money goes goes to the people of Lahaina. Amen. What you give, all you got to do is just note it in there. And what it's for. Amen. God is so, so good. Amen. Amen. So thank you for watching. Please go ahead and su subscribe to YouTube as well. Amen. You can, you can find us on YouTube. And you get to hear all the people and all the word. Amen. And just be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right.